Hello folks, welcome back to my Awakening Podcast, Episode 5, Being Good with God May Lose You Your Friends. Actually, anytime we go through major changes or, or shifts in our lives, we tend to weed out those loose, unfulfilling, and unhealthy relationships we've been holding on to. Now, before we get into the topic today, I want you to just like, subscribe, favorite, or follow this podcast, and please share it with someone you know that, that could possibly benefit from it. It may be that catalyst that changes their lives. So weeding out relationships sounds sort of harsh, but it's exactly what we do in order to walk through our changes. Changes that could be negative or positive, and that's where this podcast comes in. Over my lifetime, I've gained and lost all sorts of relationships due to my own changes and how I needed them to go, good or bad. Funny thing is, is that as soon as I started reconnecting with God over the last five years, I've pretty much cleared out 95% or more of my friends and family. Yeah, family. What does that tell you? To me, it clearly states that the more we connect with God, the more we disconnect with our human relations, because the human relations have less purity and love in them than our relationship with God. Maybe we don't disconnect fully, but we certainly trim down considerably. There seems to be a correlation between more God and less human. I see it pretty simply as finding what's more important to me while I'm here on earth, and my one true goal is to go home to God, which entails me communing with God a lot more, not just at bedtime, but anytime. Even as I record these podcasts, I'm asking God to talk through me. Not like it's God talking or on some sort of channel. It's more like I just ask God to walk with me and that the words I choose be as if God were trying to express it to you right now through me. I've also restructured my priority list so instead of stuff first, it's God first, me second, others next, and stuff becomes way at the bottom. Now, without God first in my life, I can't be the best me. Without the best me, I can't be the best father, the best boyfriend, partner, co-worker, communicator, friend, or anything. Without the best me that I can give to others, my stuff reflects my behaviors. That's why there's so much drama in today's world, especially with those folks that say they hate drama. So naturally, as I shift my priorities, my friends won't be as high a priority as they may have been, or as they may have thought they were. The hard truth is, guys, The more I reconnect with God, the less and less I reach out to my friends, my family, and pretty much everyone else in the ways I used to, with obvious reasons. If God is your BFF, do you really need a human to be? I mean, it doesn't get any more truthful and honest and loving and caring than responses from God. It shows up clearly and quickly through social media and other communicating activity that used to be done with others, you know, like phone calls. Though all social media apps have this algorithm that controls what we see and from whom we see our posts, it's also that desire to limit how much time I actually spend on social media. And then it's what I say, or what do I post, or how do I respond on social media stuff that also tends to remove friends from my list. And I'm okay with that. When I went through my hardest transformation over 20 years ago, and by the way, (laughs) Thank you, God, for walking me through that and helping me remove alcohol from my life. Well, when I went through that transformation, I began seeing my priority list and how insanely destructive it was to me and everyone around me. But it was the changing of my beliefs, my environment, my addictions, my habits, my thoughts, and and that priority list, and ultimately my behaviors that made the transformation quicker and a whole lot less painful. I'm here to tell you it wasn't pain-free. It was just less painful than it could have been. I made a choice to heal. It came with change. And as we all know, change tends to come with pain. But it's how we perceive the pain that makes it the easy way or the hard way. It also came with pain for those around me. Because if they weren't part of my addictive behaviors, I had to let them go. If they were part of my struggles and my hard times, I had to let them go. If their relationship with me didn't follow my healing ways, I had to let them go. Then, if anything I did wasn't in alignment with my healing, I had to let it go. Funny thing about our change, our friends and family may not like it. In fact, they may dislike it more than we do, even to a point of removing us from their friends list. 
which actually makes our work a lot easier when we weed out the unhealthy relationships for the healing path we take. Let them do the removal, then we don't have to worry about it. So from a life-altering transformation, I was able to see where my priorities needed to be. And it was just a matter of time for all those priorities to line up and work with me on being centered and balanced. The odd part of this whole transformation thing was that I still didn't have God as priority one 20 years ago. That was also a matter of time and patience. Us humans tend to change using our brains more than our hearts. I do know that if I were presented with the same reconnect with God 20 years ago that I received five years ago, I could have healed sooner. But apparently I wasn't ready to handle that kind of change. I had to take it one step at a time. Just so you know, I didn't see things in my life being directed by my beliefs. I saw them more directed or driven by my thoughts. I assumed that those thoughts were the controller of my actions, which for almost everyone it makes sense that they do. However, it recently became more clear to me that everything in my life revolves around what I believe, not what I think. Again, using my heart rather than my head. Let me kind of demonstrate for you. This next concept is something I've shared in my, my other podcasts, and it's, it's kind of the focal point of a program that I teach called Cognitive Awareness with a Touch of God. So here it is. What we believe in creates our core values. Now, these core values are sort of like the things we hold dearest to us or most important in our lives, like love, peace, joy, quiet, you know, that sort of stuff. Our core values are the things that generate our thought processes. If our core values are negative in general, our thoughts will be negative in general. Like, I don't think I deserve that new job. If your core value is that you're not deserving, then guess what? Your thoughts are going to say that you're not deserving. Those thoughts of ours then create the emotions that we have. If I think life sucks, then life's going to suck. And our emotions will generally be of negative responses. But understand, in order to make positive thoughts with positive emotions, our beliefs and core values have to change in order to shift that thought process and to provide healthier emotions. Now, those emotions are going to then produce our actions. If we feel angry, we do angry. If we feel sad, we do sad. If we feel deserving, then we receive good things. But again... It has to start with whether or not you believe you're deserving. Otherwise, things may not end up as you think. The universe tends to do that to us. If we believe that we're deserving, and then we feel that we're deserving, then we start receiving those things. But if we believe that our life is miserable, and we try to think that we're happy, and we try to, you know, show emotions like we're happy, we're not going to receive happy results because our belief system is still telling us that we're not deserving of being happy or deserving of life or love or peace. So after shifting my beliefs to God, being clean and sober and with much healthier ideals, it allowed me to clear my path back to God. And it still took a few years to get here, but I had a lot of patience and a desire to be here. Now my priority is God. God first, then me then others, then stuff, if that stuff needs to even be a part of my life at all. So thank you very much, folks. I know it's another short podcast, but short can be powerful. So thank you again for listening in. I appreciate you greatly. God bless you all, and I will talk to you soon.